You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... What's up? It's me. I stopped myself. Could you feel that? Because I was almost like, what's up, football fans? I was like, that's weird. Don't say that. Oh, how are you? How, how are you? Wow. April, huh? Just what a month. I have a feeling, um, yeah, even as I just started talking, I was like, oof. There was like a big rush of energy into my body of uh, what the last couple months have been like for us and just how like expansive it's really been. Uh, and so if you, if you've been on this hashtag expansion journey, you're really going to enjoy today's episode. If I do say so myself. Uh, so today I'm actually just sharing, don't know if you've heard, but mama dropped, uh, a new half hour comedy special on YouTube. So many of you have gone and watched it. If you haven't, May I so humbly offer uh, my comedic services to you in a sad, sad world. Go to YouTube.com and you can uh, type in Tired Mom and uh, you can watch the full half hour special that's there. Uh, And I wanted to tell you a little bit about what that process was like and certainly what the process has been like the last couple of days, like actually having birthed the baby and kind of in this postpartum Like, what did we learn? What have we learned? Uh, Because I actually think there's almost more to learn after the fact. This is just like a Saturday morning special, by the way. I feel like this episode where I'm like, what have we learned? Um, But I'm really going to share some of the things that I learned, mostly so I can hear myself say them out loud. I'm a big proponent of this. I know that talking out loud like if you don't have a podcast and you're just like doing your thing, talking out loud to yourself feels very bizarre. Here's why I think it's so important is vocally, like when we share, and especially if you're like me and loud and you put your hands over your heart, you can feel that reverberation of sound in your body, right? And we know that our body responds to stimuli. And when we can hear ourselves and we take the time to express what was this experience like for us? And being able to feel it in our body, especially when we do something that scares us. After the fact, being able to talk about it out loud. Wow, that was scary. I can't believe I did that, right? I know all these things. I mean, most of you who are a part of this audience are like here for it, like whether it sounds cheesy or not. But if some of you are on the fence, like jump the fuck over the fence, okay? Like it's cheesy, but it works, okay? And being able to like feel yourself say that and feeling that reverberation in your body and feeling that sense of safety will only reinforce for you like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I can do like scary shit, you know? And like full disclosure and a warning, you might start to get off on that feeling and you're going to want to do more and more things that feel challenging, that feel scary, that feel a little on the edge for you because so much of our life is monotony. Even the things that like I love, I love being able to like sit around the breakfast table, like with my husband and my kids and watch them be covered in food. And like, you know, all of these things that can be magical, but feel like a thing that we're doing over and over again. And so sometimes being, especially those of us as we're you know, having more and more life experience, we're going into our late thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, those feelings of like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Right? Like we don't get to experience that as much as when you're 16, 17, 18 in your twenties in college and you're doing things for the first time in a way that elicit that dopamine, that elicit like that, I'm going to live forever. Right? Like the older we get, the more experience we have, we have less and less opportunity just naturally to experience that. And so one of the things that I have found in this postpartum of putting this special out that was May 1st, I'm recording, I think it's the 
third. Yeah. So literally two days ago. Yeah. Can you tell? I've already feel like it's been out for like months because I'm like, holy shit. Like just the adrenal drop of being like, okay, here goes fucking nothing is unreal. And I just want to share the other reason that I think this is important to share all of this is I know so many of you, like I said, we've been working through this year and every month has built on itself. And April was fucking wicked in both the positive and negative way. When I say that, right? Like we, I feel like learned so much. We were asked to step up, step out, go inward so much in April that I know so many of you are feeling the same way I am like kicked out the other side and it's like, holy shit, what the fuck just happened? Right. And May is this beautiful respite. I'll be recording the the May newsletter later today. Um, and we may drop that as a bonus episode uh, here as well, kind of giving you that energy forecast. And a lot of that energy is also interchangeable with what I'm talking about today and what I'm sharing of this like literal bloom, right? April showers bring May flowers. Like this, holy shit, like we did it. And and whatever that we did it is for you, maybe that's quitting the job, maybe that's accepting the job, the date, the no thank you, setting the boundary, like whatever that thing was that you felt so much resistance and trepidation, yet you knew it was the fucking thing to do. And that's what putting this special out was. And here's why, okay? Many reasons. So one None of this, I want to also share, because I'm going to like knock this special quite a bit. And so none of this is like, no, tell me how good it was. Like, that's not the vibe. Okay. So get off it. That's not what I'm here to do. But what I'm here to do is like, A, I think it's cool, at least when I hear from another creator or artist or whatever, author about their experience and then going and watching that thing. Like, it just feels very like BTS in a very real way. Right. So I want to let you in on that, especially because you guys who listen to the podcast, I feel like honestly, like y'all know me better than anybody. I want to be very clear that who I am, like off the mic, frighteningly similar, okay, to who's here on the mic. I'm just probably like nicer overall, right? Like there are days, like I'm not going to bring my like bad attitude onto the mic. But other than that, like what you hear is what you get, okay? And so uh, especially I feel like with stand-up, it's the most, for me, like heightened version of my thoughts and feels, right? So there was a friend, uh, like a, 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 a follower, I guess. I hate that word, um, but a follower. And she watched the special and messaged me. She was like, whoa, I was blown away. She was like, I've only seen like your spiritual stuff. And that's like how I found you on IG. I had no idea that you were capable of something, but it was so cool to see like your, your voice in a different platform. Um, so if you haven't done comedy or aren't familiar then yeah, go watch it. Cause I'm interested to hear like your experience of that. Um, because I'm certainly right. Like if, if the spiritual point of view that I'm offering you is, is here, meaning it's lower, it's grounded, it's locked in, but also it exists on a higher plane, right? So it's typically a bird's eye view. I'm going to be speaking softer. I'm going to be more mindful of including everyone and having that inclusion and all these things. And comedy cuts right through the middle right through the middle. It's me trusting you as my audience to know and understand that what I'm saying, like I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that you can read between the lines. Right. So if I'm like, Oh yeah, fuck this, fuck you. Right. Of like, whatever it is, I'm trusting that you read through the lines of like, Oh, interesting that she would say that interesting that that's her point of view. Right. So it's not as I'm, I'm not as concerned with the audience's deep feelings, if that makes sense. Um, it's not like irreverent or, you know, like cutting edge by any means. But I think that that's the interesting thing of the way that I see things spiritually versus the way I see things comedically, which, A, I think they're both the same. But just when I'm doing it in a comedic setting, right, there's not as much flowery language. It's like, what is the thing? What is what is the turn or what is the surprise? And I have found now having, you know, comedy is my background. That's what I started. That's what I've done my whole life. And then the spiritual awakening six years ago and really carving a path for myself 
in this spiritual space of, you know, healers, speakers, intuitives, and kind of taking a long journey in that way. And during those six years, I have still been doing comedy, but it's really been more about redefining my voice and being brave enough to honestly, like to not care about everybody's feelings individually. And here's something why I think that's very important as an artist, as a creator, as a healer, as a speaker, as an author, anybody that is putting their stamp of the way they see the world. Here is why not caring about other people's feelings individually is paramount because it's not your job to make other people comfortable with your art. Your job is to be real and tell us exactly how you see it. So the difference is because people are always like, oh, I don't want to say this. or I'm going to say the wrong thing or I'm going to get canceled or people are going to be up in arms. Like people are fucking up in arms because Justin Bieber wears sweatpants and his wife wears makeup. You know what I mean? Like the world will always be up in arms about the thing that you or your art did or did not say. Right. And so it's like, let them right. the Mel Robbins, like let them. We're not concerned with that, right? I'm always very mindful because I say fuck a lot. I even say fuck a lot on this podcast. And people are like, well, if you're really funny or if you really know what you're saying, like you shouldn't have to use those words. And I am, I'm definitely aware and mindful that I'm going to lose a lot of people because that's the language in which I speak. But I also know I'm no longer willing to lose a part of myself so that other people find me, you know, digestible, right? Like if I had merch, it would just be like choke on my truth. You know what I mean? Like, because I think so many of us that are artists, that are empaths, that are healers, that are wanting to do this work, our work would be so much more potent. Our audience would be so much bigger if we decided that our truth was enough because it's ours. And that we don't have to be so concerned with, oh, I hope everybody's going to like it or, oh, that's cringe or, oh, that's ick. Right. I think I've been talking about this a lot on the last couple of podcast episodes of like, we actually do ourselves a disfate, like a disservice when we're being so mindful of everybody's feelings and we want to include everybody. And like, you're going to include the people who need to be included for your voice. Right. Because again, going back to that, like being canceled or what are people going to think? Like, none of y'all, and I know this, are going to overstep any sort of line that is a real ethical boundary. Right. Because those of us, if we are, it's that thing of like, you know, that you're a good mom. If you're already worried about being a good mom, it's the same thing. If you are already approaching your art, your life and the things you do of wanting to be as inclusive and loving and throw as big of a scope as possible, then you're already going to do that. And so that was one of, one of the biggest things I learned was that of like, let them choke, like choke on my truth. My job is not for everybody to understand it because I spent my life for 30 some odd years wanting to be digestible for everybody. And guess what? Then most people still didn't fucking like me. And then I wasn't stoked on what I was doing either. So that's what so much of this special, what not the actual like material, but the energetic release the energetic statement that I'm making to myself and the subtle energetic energetic statement that I'm making to others um, in a way of like, for me, putting out that special was creating more space for myself. And it was saying, I can take up space. And so that was like a lot of like the energy around putting it out, right? And then what's interesting is like the actual... <laughs> brass tacks of like what went into that special as far as like the material y'all I did not run that 30 minutes together until the dress rehearsal that day (laughs) I did not run that 30 minutes together in full until the dress rehearsal that day okay and I share that because I watch it back and I'm like oh my god this joke was supposed to go differently or like, ah, I should have waited on it. All of these things, right? It could be so much better. Absolutely. That was my fear. Oh my gosh. Other comics are going to watch this and they're going to be like, why would she put this out as her 30 minutes? And like, I mean, all of these people are going to be like, oh my God, this isn't funny. And like, this is her special. Why would she put it out? Oh, she put it out herself. Like, oh, that's not even important. She's not important. All these negative thoughts. 
And I had to stop and be like, first of all, done is better than perfect. What I need this piece of material to do for me is put a stake in the ground of like, As much as spirituality and being a teacher and being of service to everybody in that way is so much a part of my identity and purpose, so is making people laugh and reminding them to not take themselves so fucking seriously. And that that's important too. And it was so important for me to put that stake in the ground with this special. And also, and I know my fear is you guys are going to listen to this episode and be like, that's so self-masturbatory. But That's just my fear. The reality is I'm trusting that me being vulnerable and sharing what this experience was for me is going to empower you to know that you could do stuff that's not perfect and it can still be great. And the challenge for me in this postpartum part is telling people about the special. Like it is so hard y'all for me to DM people and go, Hey, could you go and watch this special? Like I would be so appreciative. Hey, can you share this in in your stories? Let me know how I can like help you. Like I would love to help and, you know, promote something for you or share something for you or watch something like, let me know how I can also help and promote you and support you. And making that shift for myself y'all is so empowering and so much energy that I'm still processing it through my body. And also this feeling of like, oh yeah, nobody really fucking cares. (laughs) Like, which we know. And I try to remind people all the time. Like most people have either not responded or been like, oh yeah, absolutely dude. No problem. Like nobody, like my fear was, oh, I'm going to ask people to see me and they're going to be like, oh, fucking loser. Right? Like I had all of these all of these fears and all of these things of the way people have treated me before, or I interpreted people treating me or, you know, second place was always going to be my place and just all of these things. And so for me putting this out, that it's not perfect. There were so many issues with it being recorded and I'm going to tell you those in a minute, (laughs) but like, you know, in the recording, like anything that could go wrong, went wrong kind of thing. Right. Like I didn't have any opportunities to, you know, do the whole thing in full until the day and all of these things. And it was like, who cares? Who cares? Is this your opus? Is this the last thing that you're ever going to do? Who cares if somebody is like, uh, she shouldn't be asking me to do that. Why would I do that for her? Or what? I, like whatever anybody else thinks. Because the reality is if anybody sent me something, even whether I thought it was great or not, that doesn't matter. But I really admire that somebody would bet on themselves enough To be like, hey, this is the thing I did. Could you go and check it out? Or could you do this? Or could you do that? Because in fact, the only part of me that's always like anytime that somebody has asked me, especially like a cold DM or text or something, right? Where I'm like, I haven't fucking talked to this person forever. And now they're just sending me this thing because they want me to look at it. My initial reaction is not like, oh, they're an idiot. My initial reaction of being frustrated or like annoyed of like, oh my God, that's so gross that they would do that. That initial instinct is only because I would never have the fucking balls to do that. Not because I think they're an idiot. It's because deep down there's a shadow part of me that's like, how dare they be so bold as to step outside of themselves and do that. And so such a subtle thing. I'm going to trust that if y'all are listening to this, like you get me and you're here for it. But like, I mean, maybe some of you guys are like, past this sort of energetic lesson and you're like, yeah, of course, duh, no problem. But it has been a shock, like shocking to me how much I've really thought that I'm putting myself out there. And like the more we step out and the more we ask to be seen, how little I have actually been doing that. And it's, it's almost been this like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat of, well, I'm doing the work. Like I'm putting everything out there and we do that where it's like, oh, well, it's not working. I'm auditioning and I'm not getting anything or I'm going on dates and I'm not getting anything. And it's like, well, yeah, cause you're, you may be doing a new thing, but you're still doing it the same fucking way that you've been doing it. And that was my whole thing for this year, right? We make new mistakes now. It's okay if I overstep myself and, and, you know, if I DM a couple of people and I feel weird or I feel ick about it or they don't respond or they leave me on red or like they talk shit or whatever, or people say mean things on my YouTube. They're like, this isn't funny. Or like, you know what you're fat, like whatever they could say that is my biggest fear. It's like, 
fuck, I feel like Braveheart where I'm like, let's fucking go. Right. Cause it's like, who cares? Like open up the closet and what, like face the monster because really it's not real. It's not real. And you know, the more that we want to step out and we want to be seen, you have to do shit differently. And I'm like, whether this special, because y'all, I also know me, I'm making excuses of like, oh, well, the quality didn't turn out the way it was supposed to, or, oh, some of these jokes aren't the way they're supposed to shut the fuck up, Rachel. Even if it all would have been absolutely perfect, you would still feel such resistance to asking people to see you. So stop creating obstacles for yourself because also most people like won't even a notice the difference or B won't even really care anyway. So even it's like all of us that sit and it's like, Oh, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Why people are going to watch it for two seconds and move on. Done is better than perfect. Asking people, putting yourself in the ring, right? It's my favorite Stephen Pressfield uh, quote of like, if you, that I'm going to butcher, but you know, it's like, if you want to be in the arena, you're going to get stepped on by some bulls. And how can we shift our energy to be able to handle the ick? That cringe feeling, because you have to push past that feeling. You have to push past that threshold of, what are they going to say? Because you want to know what? Um, while it feels as though the internet and everything else and everything else that everybody has to say feels so real and the bigger your audience or the bigger, you know, you've, you've launched this thing and nobody's responded back or, you know, like you told of your family, Hey, we're not going to have a big wedding. Like we're, you know, we're going to do something just for us. And it's like, Oh, what's everybody going to say? Right. Or, Oh, we did throw this big wedding. Cause that's what I've always wanted to do. And everybody's like, Oh, you're spending that much money on a dress. Like whatever the thing is. And everybody else has their opinion. Guess what? None of those people fucking live in your house. Hopefully. Right. Like, that's what I have to keep coming back to. It's, it is the purpose of like, do you feel safe? And I, y'all I'm proud. So cheesy, but I, I need to say it. And like I told him to get in, put my hands over my chest so I can feel my body say it. It's like, I feel safe to not be liked and seen. <laughs> I feel safe to not be liked. I spent my whole fucking life. I'm almost 40 years old, y'all. I turned 38 this week. And it was this huge thing where I was like, no fucking more. I'm not going into another decade. And again, because when we say that, it's like, you know, I'm not the girl. It's like, no fucks given. Like, yeah, you should care. You should care a lot, right? But the distinction of I'm not living for anybody else anymore. I'm almost fucking 40 years old, dog. Time is running out. God willing, I live a very, very long life. But nothing is guaranteed. And what is the point of me getting on a mic and talking to people on stage or here or telling people or wanting people to rise up within themselves and live their best fucking life if I'm not willing to do that? And it's just so, it's so interesting to me how this I'm honestly like silly piece of comedy of 30 minutes of something I made that so quickly will be old news for me and maybe a thousand people will watch it. That's the goal. We'll get a thousand people to watch it and then everybody will move on with their day. But how empowering it has been for me and especially, you know, I, I was talking with um, Caroline, who's like my right hand and Alex, who's my husband. And I was saying, you know, let this be a lesson to us that we're, everybody's always worried about like, well, the stakes are low and when the stakes get bigger and when the stakes get bigger, it's like, let that, we get to decide, we get to decide what feels like pressure. That, that was that other shift for me where like, I finally stepped into it. Like I get to decide what success feels like to me. I get to decide how I want fame to feel. I get to decide who I want in my corner. I get to decide how I want to talk to my audience. I get to decide how we feel as a community together, how we help each other, what we do. I get to decide that. And it's so interesting to me how so much of this I'm like, I know it's a lot of energy coming at you, but I'm, I'm going to trust that it's what you needed right now. It feels like a lightning bolt, but it's like, we, we get to decide 
And and so funny to me how like this thing has just like it has kicked so many bricks open for me and removed so many blocks. And it was that thing of like, holy shit. Right. I always love this when I say where it's like, oh, the call was coming from inside the house the whole time. It's been me creating the obstacles the whole time. Oh, I can't be seen because of this or, oh, this has to be perfect. It's like, y'all, again, didn't even put all of that 30 minutes together until the day. There's two jokes in that special that typically crush. They crush every time. I did them pretty much to silence. Pretty much to silence. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. Okay. That's never happened before. And I was, I almost asked Alex, I'm like, should we edit that out and save those jokes? And he's like, no, just use them. Who cares? Just use them. And it's like, yeah, what am I comparing myself to? To, uh, to what? Put it in, put it in, let them watch it. You know, be like, I, I really also, one of the things that has totally shifted this for me of going after what I really want and telling people, because that's the second part. I've been going after what I want for years, but I haven't been fucking telling anybody, <laughs> you know? I haven't been telling anybody. I haven't been fighting for what I want. And that is the second key component. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. You have to tell people. You have to ask your community. You have to ask people to be seen. You have to ask your agent, hey, to get me into this room. You have to ask your boss, hey, I want this thing. You have to ask your partner, hey, you know what? I would actually like our intimacy to feel this way, right? You, you, hey, I, I need a raise or hey, I want to move out. Like nobody is going to do that but you. You have to use your voice. You have to be comfortable being cringe. You have to accept and understand that being human is also being fucking uncomfortable. And in fact, the way to live your best life to feel as good as you can is accepting that so much of life is going to be uncomfortable. So much of it, people are not going to understand you. It's going to feel icky. It's going to be uncomfortable. But that's just part of the deal. That's the deal. And that's so much for me that I, you know, whether that comes from like, when I was really stepping out, you know, at like middle school, early high school and realizing like, oh, people are not liking this or this is not how everybody's acting and everybody's acting a different way. And so whether that was ADHD masking or that was like, let me be small or let me be funny because you don't, you know, I'm not the hottest girl out of my friend group. So I'll be the funniest girl or like all of these ways that we twist and turn and make ourselves small from that phase of our life. And it's like, stop being held prisoner to whatever phase of your life was at that somebody else taught you something about yourself that wasn't fucking true. I'm not 13. And it makes me sad for some of the things that 13, 16, 17 year old Rachel had to experience. But it was just an experience. It wasn't the truth. I'm 38. We're not going to do that anymore. It was so cute. I found um, uh, this girl that I grew up with going to dance class with tagged me in a video from her eighth birthday. And it was an old video camera. And I guess they went around the table and they asked everybody their full name and how old they were. And it's all these little kids being like, oh, I'm, you know, Beth, uh, da, 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 and I'm six. And it's like, well, I'm like all these kids, you know, like not really like knowing what to say. And then it pans to me and I just go, I have pigtails on and a bright red shirt. And I just go, I'm Rachel LaForce and I'm seven years old. And I have not stopped watching that because I was like, oh, what I'm doing in my life and what I'm reclaiming for myself is not something that I have to work on is not something new is not something I have to apologize for because I love living life big because I love seeing other people because I love and enjoy other people's experiences and their art and what they're doing. I don't have to fucking apologize that I think that's cool as shit at seven years old. I came into the world, all these other kids, not knocking these other children. Okay. But you know, like it was so clear to me that even at seven years old, I knew exactly who I was and I was happy to be there. And so it just was like this really beautiful reminder of like, yeah, like let it be big, let it be loud, let it be messy, whatever it needs to be, but it's yours. So I just want to share that with you of like, Wherever you are and you're having all of these feelings or things that are uncomfortable or you're on the edge, like I'm just telling you, like the water feels good, man. 
you know, and I, I really am so excited for like continued, like scary. Like I'm kind of excited to like continue to like scare myself a little bit or like be a little embarrassed. Like, okay, you know, let them unfollow you. Let them not like you. Let them say no to going on a date with you. Like it's okay because you are safe enough to handle it. It is safe to be seen. It is safe to say exactly what you want to say and ask for what you want to ask for. It's completely okay. It's completely okay. If you need it, you don't need anybody to say it is, but if you needed somebody, allow me. Let me be the one. Right? Like going back to the actual brass tacks of the special, okay? The uh, audio did not record uh, on multiple, so for you audio files, you know the difference. Like, you record audio through a mic and then you record audio in the room. Uh, also never record a special during Mercury retrograde. Okay. Egg on my face, because like I said, everything, we had camera issues, we had sound issues and the product was not what I envisioned it as being what I had spent money on it being what I thought it was going to be. And I wrestled with it all month long. I'm like, I'm not putting this out. I haven't been so mad about something not being the way that it was supposed to be in a long time. I screamed, not at anybody, in my car, but I was mad. I like punched like very hard the steering wheel multiple times. I just want, I like, I need you guys to understand like how disappointed and angry I was that I put time and energy and this thing that felt so sacred and I really wrestled with it because I was like, this is not the product I want to put out there. I'm not going to put it out. And I was on the fence pretty much up until the day that I put it out. And yeah, literally until the night before, because I was like, I could always pull the plug on it, not do it. Maybe like I'll reshoot it. I'll like, and then I'm like, what would I tell somebody else? Because I'm over here being like, oh, it's not perfect. And this didn't work. And this didn't work. And like, you know, because it has to be the best for who, for who are you fucking famous? Everybody knows who you are. No one gives a shit right? Respectfully. And I was like, I have to go into my voice. Of what would I, what would I tell a client? And I had to have my feelings and be like, yeah, it sucks. That really fucking sucks. It sucks that the, you know, lighting was the way that it was and it wasn't supposed to be the right way. And that, you know, it's like the sound didn't work and the joke did like, there are so many things that did actually go wrong (laughs) and that sucks that really sucks and also uh put it out anyway and tell people about it put it out anyway and tell people about it and move the fuck on because is this the only thing that you're gonna put out is this it that's because that's what I would tell somebody it's like is this it this is the only thing you're ever gonna do you know probably not probably not so it's like let's just just the lesson even in that alone of, yeah, it's like done is better than perfect. And the lesson of like, yeah, you want to know what? Well, you know, and I talked about earlier where we do that thing of like, well, the stakes are going to get higher and higher. And so it has to be perfect. and has to be this thing. Why? Because you want to know what? Sometimes life just fucking happens and things don't work out and timing doesn't work out. And the thing that you wanted to happen didn't happen. And the person you wanted to share your thing didn't share it in the, in the person, you know, you, you had 13 spots open on your retreat and you only sold four or whatever, because things happen when you put yourself out there. That's what living is. That's actually how, you know, it's working when you are having big fucking feelings to putting yourself out there. That is when you know, you're actually asking to be seen. That's what those feelings are there to tell you. And so it doesn't mean dismiss your feelings, process them, feel them, acknowledge them, and then do it anyway. Right? I think that's enough of me yelling into the mic about what this experience has been like for me. But I just, I, I, I have learned so much and I'm going to be so interested to see even, like I said, a year from now, because there's a lot of stuff even behind the scenes that I'm putting into action and, uh, and everything like that. I'm, I'm really excited to see how it all evolves. And I, I do just want to take a very vulnerable, uh, and significant moment to truly 
thank each and every one of you for listening to this podcast. And it could make me very emotional um, because I really do all of this and show up because it is what makes me so happy. And when I realized that nobody needs me to be great is when everything shifted for me that I, that I have had this, this understanding and this awareness of like, Oh, I have to be perfect looking or I have to be thin or it has to be this, or there has to be a million followers for anything that I say or do to be significant. And I would never hold anybody else to that standard. I would never in a million years tell somebody else like, well, this will be better when you're thinner, you know, <laughs> like I would never, this will be better when you drive this car. Like, and I, you all allow me to share my lessons learned and DM me and say, I needed to hear that. And then share with me your experience and each of you that are, that you have your own podcasts or you guys have like your own art initiatives or the things that you're doing or, you know, just your day job. And you have other things that like, you know, passions that you feel um, deeply about or your stay at home parents, like just the fact that you all share your life and insight with me is such a beautiful gift. And I just really want you to hear me when I say that, that I am so proud of each of us for showing up in this community and these other spaces. And I will never take your support for granted. And I am so excited because everybody loves to be an OG, right? Like I'm, I'm so excited as things continue to evolve and you'll be like, I was there when she first started her podcast. So like, you know, I, I just really want to say how much it really means to me. And uh, I'm just so excited for what is next. And if you haven't, may I ever so humbly ask you, please go and watch Tired Mom on YouTube. You can go to Rachel LaForce on YouTube, type in Tired Mom. It's right there on my page. It's 30 minutes. It's fast. It's furious. It's not perfect, but goddamn, it's fucking funny. So please go and enjoy that. If you like it, will you please share it in your stories, in your uh, newsletters, tell a friend, tell your dental hygienist. Uh, it just, I would be so grateful if you want to do a swap, if you'd like me to share something, watch something, promote it, give it a like. Please, I am here. I'm a real person. I would love to be able to help support you, make your dreams come true. None of us can do this in a vacuum and we can't do it alone. So please, again, go and watch Tired Mom. Enjoy the hell out of it. It has been such a beautiful lesson learned. And now, uh, of in typical Rachel LaForce fashion, I'm already writing the next one and planning for how we are just going to level up what we did. And uh, in the meantime, I will stay in this present postpartum of putting this out. And yeah, so please go watch it. Uh, comment if you can, like it, subscribe to my YouTube. Even if you typically are not on YouTube, I would be so grateful. Uh, yeah, as always, the Misfit Light uh, is on Mondays. We're going to be shifting that going into late summer, uh, how we're going to be doing that and kind of creating it more of a community space. We're going to be doing some more Q&As. Uh, and some more things offline where you guys will be coming in, sharing what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to have different facilitators that will sit in on different weeks and sharing their experiences. So really beginning to move that of more of an insular uh, group. We're also going to be working towards uh, getting a second episode of the Rachel LaFour show every uh, week. So uh, we'll be kind of doing more energy readings along with whatever else is going on. We'll be making that price. That'll go behind a paywall, be something like five bucks or 11 bucks a month. So if you really like this podcast, know that that will be coming out. That'll be something that's available to you. So lots is going to be percolating over here in the, the world of Rachel LaForce uh, between now and August. My books are open. Uh, I can do a, I can do, I currently offer two different one-on-one -on -one sessions. I offer the creative eye session, which is bringing all of my experience as a creative, as a creative producer, as an artist. Uh, so if you have something that you're working on, maybe you're fine tuning, et cetera, something you're pitching, I would absolutely love to help you in that hour long session. Uh, you can always send things to me early. I'll take a look. So that way in our session together, you're not having to explain the thing. I'm already hip to it. We can spend the full 60 minutes helping you kind of tweak this thing and really make it shine. So you can sign up for that at rachelforce.com. Uh, also, if you're really feeling called to work with me spiritually, I would be so honored to help you 
kind of clear some things out. So I offer the Misfit Path reading. This is really couture spirituality as I find it. Everybody doesn't need to uh, connect with ancestors or need Reiki. Some people, so sometimes somebody may come in and we may do chakra work. We may talk to your guides. We may just pull some cards. We may just look at like where you were and where you want to be and give you some really earthly action steps. So I've really found that each person is so unique and what I'm offering them is unique to them. Again, it is a misfit path reading. Each of us are on our own misfit path doing it differently. And I want to be able to help you really get into alignment, find that clarity, find that purpose and just fucking go. Okay. Cause we need you and we need you lit up. All right. That's all I got for you for everything else. You can go to rachelaforce.com. Again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you in advance for watching and sharing. It really means the world. I'll see you next week. Love you. Mean it.